What is the hottest you remember your cell ever getting? 104. Can you describe to someone what that feels like? Death. It feels like everything's melting off of you and you're never going to make it out. That's what a cell heated to 104 degrees feels like, according to a just-released inmate at the Perryville Prison for Women. The 12 News I team raised questions about Governor Katie Hobbs' administration's response to the extreme heat at Perryville. I asked Hobbs about it. We also look ahead to how she'll deal with a Saudi farming business guzzling western Arizona groundwater and whether she knew about the Arizona Employee Pension Fund's reported investment in deals that also drain our groundwater. One of the impacts of the uh, extreme heat was felt by the women inmates at Perryville Prison. Were you aware of the conditions there, which temperatures inside cells reached 100 degrees? Were you aware of that? Yes, and we're, we're taking steps to address that. What did, how did you find out and did you communicate to your prison's director that, hey, something needs to be done here? Well, I, I didn't have to communicate. He was on top of it and, and he's the one that alerted us to the, to the problem and he's taking action. Our reporting indicates he may not have been on top of it, either because he wasn't being, getting the right information or maybe just didn't grasp the situation. Did you see any evidence of that? Uh, I No. What needs to be done there to assure these inmates, these women, can be kept in what might be considered safe conditions? Yeah, I mean, across the board, um, we inherited a correction system that um, hasn't always treated people humanely. And so there's a lot of systemic issues that need to be addressed. Um, and this is, I think, you're seeing the result of one of them. And so there's a lot that Director Thornell has been tasked with turning around there. Um, I believe he's up to the task and he's, he's doing it. Um, it's going to take a lot of time. Are, are temperatures at 100 degrees in cells acceptable to no. you? No. No, no. 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 Our other existential crisis, water. Um, I want to turn to the, uh, the Saudi farm that's getting so much attention. I believe Washington Post reported your office is looking at not renewing the lease for the Saudi farm in western Arizona that's been growing the alfalfa, the subject of a lot of controversy. Can that lease just be ended, or will it result and the farm gone, or will this result in lawsuits? Well, that's exactly what we're trying to avoid. We're looking at the best way to address this um, for Arizonans and, um, and, and hopefully avoiding litigation in doing so. Um, you know, leases are legal agreements. We couldn't just come in and end the lease. Um, and there are other leases like this, um, and we couldn't treat one leaseholder differently than others. So right away, we started looking at all these leases and what our options were. Um, and that, you know, the best, highest use of, of, of water and how we can be really strategic about how we're making that determination. So to set expectations, because you know there's a lot of outrage mm -hmm. about this. Yes. Some of yep. it unfair because it's not just this farm, right. as you point out. But should Arizonans expect that when this lease ends, that's the end of it, they'll be gone? Um, I can't answer that question right now. And I, I can tell you that, um, that Fondamonte's presence here is not just on the lease land, they own land, and so um, ending that lease isn't going to make them go away. Here's a new water issue I just learned about through a, an organization called Reveal. Our pension fund, state pension fund money, is tied up in a company that has the le that leases land to other companies, one of them an uh, uh, Emirati company. Were you aware that the pension fund is, makes that kind of investment? I was not. Um, Would that trouble you? Uh, yes. <laughs> Um, so these are the kinds of things that maybe haven't been as closely examined before my administration and certainly things that we want to make sure we're um, aware of and um, making smarter decisions for, for Arizona. Let's move to ESAs. You've been a really tough critic of them suddenly over the last week or two. You were a tough critic uh, in your State of the State speech. You talked about wanting to put a cap on ESAs or repeal the program. Mm -hmm. That didn't happen. Yeah. I don't, I don't get, go, get into detail about that. But where are you right now mm -hmm. on ESAs? What, what do you want to do? Well, I have never backed down from saying that these are a problem, that they are um, a, a, budget, a budget breaker. Um, and we now have more concrete numbers that show us that. Uh, so um, the Republicans made it clear early on in budget negotiations that, that ESA, um, uh, any type of rollback was, was off the table. And so we worked with what we could, and we got some metrics in place that are going to help us tell the story. Um, and, uh, and I think now these numbers 
are glaring at everyone in the face. Um, we we now, didn't those, those are numbers, the, the deficit numbers that the independent budget folks at the Joint Legislative Budget Committee have some doubt about. Well, so they're from Tom Horn. Uh, Tom Horn had those numbers, and then we um, were also came up with similar numbers. Uh, of a $320 million deficit next year yes. because of ESAs. Yes. So play this out to next year. Is there going to have to be a special session to deal with this, do you think? Or are you aiming toward perhaps another statewide vote in November of 2024 on rolling back ESAs? Um, we are looking at all the options. Um, the reality is that we're going to have the same legislature we had this year. Um, and so, you know, um, are these numbers going to continue to keep them off the table or, or allow some, some uh, restriction, uh, means testing, whatever it is, or capping the number of students that are enrolled? There's a fairness argument being made. 60,000 students are in this program. Is it fair from an equity standpoint to just yank it away? It's from not. Them, it's not or fair. Or not give others what they have. It's not fair that working families right now are subsidizing private school tuition for other students, and that that some of these students don't have access to the same high quality education. Uh, let's turn to reproductive rights. Uh, that was the centerpiece of your campaign. Mm -hmm. I've heard some arguments that if there had been no Dobbs decision, you might not have won the election. It was big, uh, a big, played a big role in getting voters uh, on your side. Um, Planned Parenthood's CEO told me before she went on to a new job that a referendum, statewide vote, was in the works for next November, uh, on re November 24, on reproductive rights, uh, abortion rights. You've said that to me as well mm -hmm. in the past. Is that still the plan? And most importantly, what would the question be when you put it to voters? I mean, that's, that, that's the big question right now. And, and there's a lot that goes into ballot measures, polling, testing language, what's going to work, what's going to pass, um, and um, keeping a coalition together who wants very diverse things. Um, at the end of the day, Arizonans are on the side of um, access to safe and legal abortion and reproductive health care, and, um, and I think we'll have a ballot measure that, that will, will pass uh, by the voters. I don't know specifically what that looks like. So could it be... Uh no law at all on, on abortion? I don't think that's going to get across the finish line for sure. <laughs> you can see my full interview with Governor Hobbs on 12news.com or on our YouTube channel. Go to 12news.com slash YouTube. That's our show for this week. Thanks very much to Governor Hobbs for joining us. See you back here next weekend for another round of Sunday Square Off.